Ganeriwal. I'm a celebrity nutritionist, a national best-selling author, and I specialize in the gut microbiome. When it comes to weight loss or fitness, we are often made to believe that it's all your fault. If only you could control your eating and exercise enough, you would not be fat. But honestly speaking, this isn't the case. Let me explain. There are trillions of bacteria living in our gut. Collectively, we call them the microbiome. And guess what? The food that you eat feeds them. And if that is so, isn't it fair enough for them to develop some strategies to promote their own interests? Instead of passively accepting whatever you sent their way, they influence you, the host, to eat what they would like to gorge on. So, for example, if they want to eat burger tonight at dinner, as a result, you would develop cravings for a big fat burger at the dinner table. Therefore, blaming yourself and your willpower for giving in to the sudden pangs of chocolates and salty chips is faulty and outdated. The gut microbiota axis is the pathway through which they influence your eating behavior. Your gut and your brain communicate with each other bidirectionally via the vagus nerve, providing a possible pathway for these gut microbes to influence your food cravings and hence decide the menu of the day for you. It is true that your gut microbes shape your food cravings and affect your food choices and your health. But what is also true is that you have the power and the ability to reshape your microbiome and to rebalance it. So how do we do that? To start with, begin with diet diversity. Chuck dietary monotony and embrace diversity in your meals. Variety is key. The more diverse your meals would be, the more diverse your microbiome would be, meaning it would have a variety of species of bacteria. A rich microbiome when it is dominated by multiple species of bacteria, for us it simply means that there will be lesser manipulation of eating behaviors, there would be lesser cravings and it would therefore lead to better food choices and better health. Let me explain this with an example. Today, everyone is trying to avoid sugar if they want to lose weight and get fitter. But the concept of diet diversity instead says that do not eliminate it completely. Instead of eliminating sugar completely, alternate between the different forms of sugar so that you don't end up having excess of any one kind. The weekly routine that I usually suggest is that out of the seven days in a week, have honey for four days, jaggery for two days and unrefined sugar for one day. This is how you should go about with everything, whether it's pulses, lentils, millets, fruits and vegetables. Instead of only sticking to uh, three to four kinds of fruits or some four to five kinds of vegetables all the time, embrace diversity, bring more variety on your plate. The good thing is that trying to eat variety ends up being easy on the pocket as well. Since most of the indigenous varieties of fruits, vegetables, millets, etc. are lesser known, they aren't sold at an exorbitant price. Therefore, it's a win-win situation for you.